Hello Makers. In this video we're going to look at setting up Fred's brain. Now for those of you who don't know, Fred is my in-move build based off the work done by Gail Langdon. You can find more information on this website which is found at inmove.fr. Well worth having a look, uh, well worth subscribing and joining the community of builders. It is a, a fairly large community and there are a lot of these robots floating around the world. Now I have other videos where I've been building bits of my robot. In this video we're going to concentrate just on the brain. Now the variation I've done with mine is to put a Raspberry Pi or two into the head of my robot. So I will be using the Raspberry uh, the Raspberry operating system based on Linux Buster. Uh, and I will be running my robot lab on it. So in this video we'll be setting up the operating system and my robot lab. Okay, so the first thing you'll need is obviously a Raspberry Pi and you'll need a micro SD card. The micro SD card is the Raspberry Pi's hard drive. On that, we're going to copy an image of the Raspberry and set up. Now, it's very easy to get hold of it. So you go to the Raspberry and site or the raspberrypi.org website. From there, you can go to downloads. And we're going to be using Raspberry. Now there's uh, three different choices for you. You've got the full desktop and recommend software, just the desktop and then the light version, which is, it doesn't have a desktop as such. It's purely a Telnet type operation. I'll be using this one, the Raspberry Buster with desktop and recommended software. The recommended software that comes with it are things like um, the Arduino IDE and a few other programming languages. So download to somewhere on your hard drive. I've already done that so the next thing we're going to do is copy it onto an SD card. Okay, to copy the image that we downloaded which is in a zip file format onto the micro SD card I have installed a micro SD card into the computer I'm using a card reader, but we'll have to select an image. In this case, I'll be using that one. The good thing about this uh, Belena etcher is it will actually take the zip file and pull the appropriate stuff out. We're just going to double check and make sure we've selected the right device. There's only one to choose from, which is handy. And then we flash. This does take some time, but I will make it run faster for you. So let's go through the basic setup. All I've done so far is plugged a micro SD card with the image in 
powered up, connected it to a monitor, then connected it to a keyboard and a mouse. Once it booted up, it came to this screen and is now waiting for me. So we'll click on next. We know the IP address, but it is refusing connections on it. All right, so the country in my case is Australia. Time zone is Melbourne. I'm using a US keyboard and the English language. Okay, next. So in theory, this thing has access to the internet because it's connected to my local area network. Okay. Default Pi user account currently has a password Raspberry, which is standard. Strongly recommend you change this to a different password only you know. And I'd better write that down somewhere. Set up screen. The desktop should fill the entire screen. Tick the box. This screen shows black borders, which it does. Next. See the 5G, I'll go on to the 5G. Next. Next. This will do a software update. Okay, so the system is now up to date. And we'll do a restart. Raspberry Pi configuration. And I'm going to change this to red because I'm using it to drive my robot Fred. Okay, interfaces. I want to enable the camera. SSH and B and C for a start. I also need I2C. I may need SPI down the track. Um, I have got another card that I want to plug on that I haven't unpacked yet. So I'll enable that. Serial I don't think I need. One wire I don't need. Remote GPIO I may do. One wire I don't think I need. Don't need to worry about that. And they should all be correct as I said that during the initial setup. Okay, we should be good. Oops. 
and yes we will do another reboot okay so I've been able to establish a VNC connection so I'm going to change recording method what we're seeing on that GoPro capture of the screen I can now get as a window on the computer okay now that we've got the base operating system installed and VNC operating the next thing we need to look at is the sound system we're planning on using which is the i2s bus now i2s is cool but it's a pain to set up so to make this work we're going to have to download a script uh, and install a script and that um, install install script is available on github uh, and I will put a link to all of the commands that I use to actually get this to work so let's paste in our first command which downloads that script now the script is really easy to use you've just got to know how to set it up in the first place so the first thing we need to do is download it once it's down we need to change the permissions on the file so that we can execute it then once we uh, have it we need to execute it with elevated permissions that is super user so sudo gives us access to super user or root access and we can execute that script now the first thing it's going to ask us is what type of raspberry pi we're running on um, in my case it is a Raspberry Pi 3 so we use the entry of 2 and it will start to download and install if you've got a Raspberry Pi 4 obviously you need to select that one so we'll let this run and come back to it okay now that's done uh, we want to know if we want to reboot and yes we do want to reboot I thought it was going to ask another question okay so our new sound device is now installed so one of the things we want to look at doing is setting up the ELSA mixer. Now the ELSA mixer is a bit of a pain at times to set up, but what we'll do is create a new file called, with nano called .asoundrc, like that. Now in this case, I'm going to literally download and copy a, a file that I'm going to use to actually set this up. And let me expand this out a bit so it's easier to read. So all this does is define the mixer so that we can actually set volume control on our I2S microphone. So we'll save that out but it doesn't take effect until the first time we have used it so we after we've made this change we need to actually record something now I actually have the i2s microphone and i2s speaker installed already in a prototyping fashion and I'll show you an image of that shortly so let's just start the record. So testing one, two, three, testing. Um, now it's not going to be very loud first time round because I haven't set the mixer yet. 
to Elsa Mixer F4 for the capture device and you can see that the recording volume is set at almost nothing so we're going to crank that up to about 50% now my testing has shown that that seems to work alright and then we can hit escape to exit out of that now if we try that record again testing one two three you can see the graph at the bottom is actually going further along control C ends it and now we can play the file and to play the file there's two ways you can do it if we're doing it through here we a play recording dot wave ah hang on what do I record it as? File dot wave. So a play file dot wave. I'll try that again. Alright, so it's not a very loud speaker that I'm using or a loud amplifier and at the moment nobody's created volume controls for that amplifier yet. There are jumpers on it that you can configure different gains for the output. I haven't played with those yet. Uh, I will do and probably come back with a better view of that one. So that's the i2s audio now set up and configured. We can play more with that later once we've got my robot lab installed. Okay so the next thing we need to do is sort out our Java in preparation to run the my robot lab. So for that let's just have a look and see what version of Java is installed. Java minus version and so we're running 11.0.7 which is not really compatible for the Manticore version of my robot lab so what we're going to do first off is make sure our apt get is at, uh, up to date so uh, sudo apt get update okay now that's done the next thing we need to do is actually install the new the older version of the Java that we need so sudo apt get install open now oh, wouldn't it help if I had this actually on the right screen okay so sudo apt get install and open JDK dash eight dash JDK and open JDK dash eight dash JRE. So one of these is the Java development kit and the other one's the Java runtime engine. Yes, I do want this to use the extra space.
Okay, so once we've configured the Java, if we do Java version again, so Java, better get the right screen, Java version, we're still showing the version 11.07, but if we go sudo Update alternatives. Config Java. We get an option, a set of options to choose from. So what I'm looking at is mode zero is auto select, which is where it's currently at. You can see the asterisk over here next to zero. One is the higher version and two is the lower version. In this case, I really want two to be running. So we'll go two. Now, if I type Java version, we're now running uh, 1.8, which is Cool, that's what we wanted. So the next thing we need to do is have I got my robot lab on here yet? No. CD uh Now what I'm going to have to do is find my transfer tool, which is this one. Yes, I am running this through VNC. Uh, file. to move that into MRL my robot lab expects it to be called my robot lab so I'm going to rename this uh, just my robot lab so we've now got the file there so I can go Java minus jar my robot lab jar minus install and this is going to take some time so I'll accelerate this for you
Okay, now that that's finished installing, let's launch it. Okay, the real tip to this being fully launched is the console attach in the terminal window. So let's see how much of it actually installed. Unreal, we got it all. Okay, so this is my, ro my robot lab is now currently installed. I can now add services and call on them as required. Some of the ones that we, or that I will be using, include the Raspi. So start. Because I run this on a Raspberry Pi, that one gives me access to the GPIO and the I2C bus. I have in the head, or will shortly have installed, this Adafruit 16 channel servo, so we'll call that head. And we will attach that to the Raspberry Pi on bus 1. Now, if you're attaching this to an Arduino, then you'd be using bus zero. The Raspberry Pi actually has two I2C buses. One's used internally, and the other one's on the GPIO. So, bus one's on the GPIO. With the Arduino, it only has the one I2C bus, so we use bus zero. Now, the first controller I'm using for the head is configured with address 0x40. That's a hex number. You can choose others, and on those I2C interface boards, they actually have a set of jumpers that you can adjust to change their addressing. So you can run multiple of these on the same I2C bus. Okay, so that's now attached. And we can create one called servo. Servo, we'll call it Servo 01 for now. The controller will be head, which is our I2C control, uh, I2C 16 channel servo controller. And we'll connect this to say pin 2 and attach. And that will actually liven up the output, giving it a PWM signal. So that's the basics of installing the, the uh, Raspberry Pi, or my robot lab on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this video is starting to get a bit on the long side, so I am going to leave it at that and we'll come back to actually installing that Raspberry Pi into the head of the robot next. So to see when that video comes out, don't forget to subscribe, uh, click that notification bell and uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. And we'll see you in the next video.